Velkommen til et nytt videoprogram her i Siksak. Som enkelte av dere vil huske, Ole Dole var vår gjest forrige gang. Og også denne gangen har jeg med meg en celeber person her. Han er en ung mann, i likhet med Ole Dole, i sitt 26. år. Som artist, riktig nok. Han heter Cliff Richard. Velkommen til Siksak. Thank you. Uh, this is not your first time in Norway. No, I think this is, must be my fifth or sixth time. I know that uh, a lot of our um, viewers were not born when you were heard, here the first time in, in Trondheim. <laughs> no, I think I came in, in 1960, so I know that... Uh, see, I've been singing for uh, 25 years, so mm. I know that many of, of the viewers will be much younger than even my career. Mm. Og som alle fleste, de aller fleste naturligvis vet, Cliff er en kar som har lagt omtrent hele verden for sine føtter. Det begynte med noe som heter Drifter, som siden forandret navn til Shadows, og siden en solo-karriere som har sprengt de fleste hitlister rundt omkring. Uh, you come here to uh, see some videos with me, and you've mm. chosen most of the videos. Yes. The first guy we're going to see here, he's, uh, he's a young American. Yes, uh, Michael Jackson, I mean, I, I don't think he's as old as my career. He must be 23, 24, or something mm. like that. And, and, uh, I think he's made uh, some fantastic records. If I had to make one LP only in my whole life, I would choose to make Thriller. I think it's a fantastic album. And uh, like you, Cliff Richard, his uh, success is enormous. All girls go mad, and uh, well, he get fantastic reviews all over. Not uh, very. <laughs> it's pretty much like you, the young Cliff Richard. Well, yes, I suppose so. Because um, usually, when you're 18 or 19, I mean, I began when I was 18. And of course, you usually attract very young audiences, and of course, therefore, you get a lot of screaming. I know when I first came to Norway and Sweden and Denmark, in fact, all over Europe, um, I had that kind of reaction, and it was uh, it was good fun. But I, I'm I'm glad I grew up. Uh, where I've been very lucky is that I my fans have grown up also with me. Pretty good dancer, Michael Jackson. Oh, I think he's fantastic. It's amazing, actually, but. Uh, you know, black people have always had that, you know, in the... I remember my, my uncles and aunts saying, oh, they've got some wonderful rhythm, and it's really true. Somehow or another, they're almost built differently to us white folk, and uh, they make a very special movement, and I think... Uh, Michael Jackson is probably one of the better dancers, I think, of all the black singers I've seen. But you, you got a bit of rhythm yourself. Uh... Yeah, my... <laughs> you know, they have black soul and we have white soul. I don't think mm. it's... Uh, it's different. I don't think it's any better. Mm. Um, but uh, they move in a very special way. And uh, uh, white people can't always. I mean, some white people can dance like Michael Jackson, but usually there is a, there is a difference. You can see a difference by the way mm. uh, a black man dances to a white guy. So, yeah, I've got rhythm. Of course I have. And mm. I like what I do, but I like what he does also. But you think it's important to uh, handle a lot of different things if you shall make it in, uh, as an en entertainer for year after year. You, you as, as I say, you, you do that dancing and you've been into movies and all that. I think it's important because if you only do one thing, then the audience that watches you, for 25 years, for instance, for me, it would mean they would have to watch the same thing or every year. Well, so you need to make it a little different. Sometimes mm. you need to do a little drama. Sometimes you need to make films. You need to do television. You need to be on stage doing concerts. You need to make records. So you need to try all these things if you want to keep your career going for many, many years. Mm. Uh, the next guy you've chosen, that's a pretty young man, Howard Jones. Oh, yeah. I like, well, you see, uh, for me, you see, records are more important than videos. I know that nowadays um, videos sell records, but videos will never be as good as the record. Sometimes they make better videos than the records, but then the records don't sell. So, so you're going to show a video that you well, I like. It doesn't lie. I like the video, but the song is more important. For me, it's the, the video is not the greatest video in the world, but the song is fantastic. I love it. And I will always be a recording person. I'll, when I'm in the car, I can't watch videos. I only listen to records. And when I'm in the car, I like to listen to Howard Jones. Howard Jones. He's mm. got a funny hair, but he looks like a decent and neat guy. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I met his producer, and uh, uh, it was, he was telling me that Howard Jones is a very um, sensitive, sensible man, you know? Mm. 
and uh, and by the look of him, he just looks very modern. I think. I mean, that kind of haircut. Uh, people like Kajagugu have all the, the fancy hair, and it's. Mm. I like watching that. I think that's good. Mm. He has a good image. I like. Mm. But you see, for me, the record is so good. You know, you can listen to it and say, "Oh, those drums are fantastic. The sequence of bass, his vocal sound, everything for me is the perfect way of making a record." Mm. The video is interesting, of course, you know, but uh, as I said before, for me, the song has to be more important than the video. Mm. Uh, when we're talking about image, as your image has always been very decent. You're the person who, uh, well, all ages enjoy you, all people, young people. Yeah, I could never understand why some people want to have a bad image, you know. Um, I want to prove in my life that it's not necessary uh, for rock and roll to be connected with sex, drugs, you know, spitting and and being a bad man, you know? Mm. Oh, I mean, obviously, yes, of course, rock and roll has all types of people. But have you ever been tempted to do something real crazy? Something far-fetched, not like the Cliff Richard, you know? Uh, not for the sake of it, no, it's easy. It's, you know, in a, in a way, at this time of my career, I could be the most controversial person because I have a really good image. And all I have to do is spit at you or hit you in the face and I will have a wonderful new image and it will be the best ever. But it's, what's the point? It would not be the real me. In most cases, I don't believe that the images we see from people, uh, particularly when they show a violent image or a bad image, I don't think that it's the real person. Because very often I've met uh, rock and roll artists mm. who have a very strange image, you know? And I've always been a little frightened. When I meet them, they are so nice. So inside they're nice, outside they try to be something else. I like to be, I, am, I, li I like to like people, and I like people to like me. So my image is that. Mm. I don't want to upset someone. Why should I upset someone? There are already so many wars and problems in the world. If it's possible for me to make some people smile and feel happy, I would rather have that image. I think the world needs more images like that. Okay, we're going across the, the Atlantic Sea to a person I think you like, Rick Springfield. Yes, I do very much. He's an Australian, but uh, he has a, probably m most of his success is in America. Mm. And when, you know, obviously all of us that watch television, uh, we like to watch the videos and things, you know. Um, and with the Rick Springfield, I was in America earlier, late last year, and uh, they had a, a show where people could phone in and say which video they like best. And his was the winning one, and I can understand why, because I like space things, you know. Mm. I like, I used to watch Star Trek and Star Wars and all those kind of movies. I love space and science fiction. And his whole video is like inside the, um, the spacecraft. So it immediately made me interested. The song also is good. I think, as always, I believe the song must be good also. Okay, the Space Center. Yeah. You're interested in uh, phenomena outside this trivial world. Yeah, I find it interesting. I mean, I think space movies will always be of interest to people because it's something we can't quite understand. Mm. But some people might think it's uh, strange that you pick a space video and not a Christian video. You've been a Christian artist for 20 years. Yeah, 20 years. well, I've not really seen any Christian videos. What worries me, of course, is that uh, today's Christian thinks that, uh, many of today's Christians think that if, if a video or, or, say, a photograph is a Christian photograph, it has to have a picture of the cross. Whereas, in point of fact, <clears throat> I'm learning that as a Christian, we must only do things the way we feel. And because we are Christians, what we do will be Christian. I can sing my latest record, it will be a Christian performance because I am a Christian. So that therefore, um, I'm allowed to, I'm f I can be free in my head to think about anything. So I can think about space. I know that God is bigger than space. You know, once, I remember reading that uh, an astronaut, I think he was a Russian astronaut, he went up into space and he said, there's no God up here. The man is small. Mm -hmm. Both the American man, the Russian man, everybody, we're all so small. We think we can see God if we go high enough. He's beyond what we can see and listen to. So uh, I know that. And, and I know that we live in a very, very unusual universe. But then again, I, I expect it to be fascinating and, and unusual because I believe God created it. And so therefore, there will be parts of it I will never understand. But I will always be fascinated by it. Okay, from God and the gospel to the very, very cruel world. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also chosen a video. <clears throat> expression from Australia. Uh -huh. Describing, well, the world like it is for some people. Okay, let's see it.
We have chosen this video to get your reaction. Uh, do you think it's necessary to use these strong pictures? Uh, do you think they... Uh... Uh, I don't really think so. Uh, although, you see, they do it very well. This is the danger of, of videos now. Uh, when things are done really well, you're willing to accept it. And um, it seems to me that the lyric of the song is strong enough without those kind of pictures. In fact, I always think that uh, really well-written lyrics uh, need no pictures. They tell you what you need to know. Uh, the song doesn't describe a man carrying a gun or people being shot. It just tells you about places in the world where there's no love, where there's mistrust, where there's war. And it tells you that we, sh we are always closing our eyes and don't want to see what is the real world. Mm -hmm. And that is enough. And it seems to me that it's, it's easy to show the violence. It's easy. I could make a great video about violence, you know. Um, but we, we already know that. I, I, I just think sometimes this is not really a criticism of this video. I think it's a criticism of all of us that are, that are performing. That sometimes we make it very easy for ourselves. We, it's easy to make a kind of war video. So I don't think it's necessary. I think they could have maybe done it some other way. Because the lyrics are subtle, but the pictures are blatant. But now it's time for a video. Yeah, well, when you said to me, pick some videos, I picked out videos that I liked. And then I thought, well, I like one of my own, you know? Uh, <laughs> I did one for Wired for Sound, and uh, of all the videos I've made, I think this is the most uh, interesting to look at, because we used the roller skates, and, and of course many people said to me afterwards, oh, we didn't know you could roller skate, you know. Well, of course, I roller skated when I was a baby, you know, mm. and I had to learn it again, but uh, I'm very pleased with this video. Beautiful girls, fast cars, and uh, happy people. Some, yeah. Some people would call this uh, escapism. Yeah, I suppose it is, really. When I do a concert, for instance, I always think that for two hours I want people to forget about whatever they have been worried by um, and let them come into the fantasy world, you know? I always think that sometimes we are in a very fortunate position that we can actually present people with three minutes of fantasy that will remove their pain for a little while. Uh, it's not always important to remove pain. Sometimes I think to make people uh, grow in their heads you have to sometimes present a little struggle but You're not afraid of um, putting up a lot of crazy ideals for people, being rich, being happy, being fancy, being no, popular? No, uh, because I don't throw that at people. I mean, I never speak about how much money I earn. Uh, I don't really talk about being famous either. Uh, I know I'm famous, but uh, when I walk about the streets in my hometown, the butcher says, hello, Cliff. Yeah, but uh, when people watch this video, they think, well, this is the world, this is the life of Cliff, Cliff Richard, the big stars. Well, That's where you be. then we must tell them that it's not true. Mm. Um, those roller skates make me look as though I'm gliding through life, but in fact I fell over once and hurt myself. We, we have to tell them all the time, this is just a video, this is not reality, people. So it's easy. I've mm. now told them. So your life is not like this? No, of course not. It's like uh, when I'm doing Devil Woman on stage, you know, I have, uh, she's just a devil woman. Well, I don't, I don't walk about in life going, hi, Peter. You know, it's not real. This is real. Now, we, you and I are speaking for real, and uh, this, is, this is reality. Uh, people must be made aware of that. Art is about taking you into a picture. One man paints a picture, and he wants you to understand something. And if you look at it, you can be with him. Um, if you read a book, you can go somewhere, because someone tells you about Norway. And if it's written really well, you can feel the snow, you can see the trees. And so in a song, if I want to sing about music, and, you know, and living for sounds in my ears. Uh, you know, I present it like that. This is how it feels for three minutes only. Have you ever been tempted to jump off the whole thing, do something completely different, join the local fire brigade or be a postman or something? No, I don't think I'd be a very good postman. Uh, no, this is my work. I like it very much. If I didn't like it, then I would think about something else. But, um, you know, each one of us in life have to find something that mm. we like to do. Not everybody watching this program, for instance, will find the job they want to do most. So they have to find a reason for doing what they're doing, so that maybe there will be people watching who work in a factory and they wish they were pop singers. Mm. But they mustn't wish for that. They must say, okay, I'll work for the factory and I'll live for my wife and my children. 
And that should be enough. It should be enough. My father did it. My father did not like working where he worked. He worked in an office. He found it boring. They didn't pay him very much. But what happened was when he, he left the work, he lived as a man. He loved my mother. He loved us as children. So that was just a, re a way for him to make his life good. Mm. So we must think about where we are and not always desire what someone else wants. It's too easy and it creates a great deal it's of It's easy to say when you're very privileged yourself. That's right, it is, but I'm not the only one that says it. Mm. But you've asked me and I'm telling you what I think. I think that a lot of people feel that once you become famous and rich, you have no right to say anything anymore. I do. I can remember being poor. Uh, in fact, uh, most of my friends have never been as poor as me. And most of my friends are not in show business, you know? So uh, just because uh, someone makes money and, and becomes famous doesn't mean they don't understand life. I think I understand it more than most people because I've lived both sides. Mm. I know what it's like to be poor and I know what it's like to be rich. And I know what's really important, not being rich, but being satisfied. <laughs> it's as simple as that. If a man watching the television is a satisfied man and he meets a famous person who is unhappy, he is a more successful man. It's as simple as that. Mm. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Peter.